And if you are engaged... Bota McNamara, legal consultant for the insolvency legislation, explained the role and authority of the trustees and the insolvency supervisor under the new legislation, spearheaded by the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, NCPC. In recent weeks, the NCPC has held several stakeholder consultations with the legal fraternity, insurance and financial sectors, and the business community to update them and solicit feedback on the imminent enactment of the insolvency bill. In terms of powers, as I said, the trustee, be it government or otherwise, has a lot of powers built in to investigate, to engage in, in collection of assets, distribution of assets, and to ensure the system plays fair for both sides, credit and debtor. Same with the, with, with the insolvency um, supervisor, because they will have at their disposal a lot of tools to police trustees to make sure they're doing their job correctly. Nicholas Barnard, chairman of the NCPC, stated that the Office of Insolvency will serve as an arbiter providing assistance to businesses and individuals negotiating proposals with lending institutions. With that arbiting agency that can help them, can mediate, I think it's a fantastic idea. I think it will give businesses a lot of confidence. Um, going through difficult times, they know that there's a door that they can knock on. Again, I also think that the, the banks will actually appreciate that mediating agency um, and it'll give them security too. Brian Luisi, Executive Director of the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce, Industry and Agriculture, acknowledged the Chamber's support and active participation in discussions and consultations over the years, contributing to the formulation of the insolvency legislation from its initial concept to the current stage. The Chamber was one of those who, over 15 years ago, spoke about the issue of access to credit. And access to credit has two sides. It has the supply side, but also it has the demand side. He noted that the Chamber has long advocated for strengthening St. Lucia's financial infrastructure and landscape to offer more options for both the business community and individuals. So it gives people an opportunity to um, look at their, their, their financial situation, look at their debt situation, and make arrangements other than just wrapping up their business. So it gives options, it gives them the, the business person the chance to continue the operation, it gives the individual a chance to maximize the returns and the options. It also gives the creditor a greater chance and a greater structure in recouping some of the, of, the, of the outstanding resources that they have put forward. The NCPC also received high commendation for its steadfast commitment to advancing the insolvency legislation. But the NCPC has not taken this as a tick in the box process where they say, oh, we did that. They've done substantive dialogue, substantive negotiation. It has been sometimes frustrating, but they've stayed the course. And so we're happy to see this legislation come into fruition. It's been marvelous to look and see what work and what they've achieved and to hear the members and the people on the ground articulate what they've achieved. It's fantastic. The NCPC has launched a public education campaign to inform stakeholders and the wider public about the benefits and provisions of the insolvency legislation. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting.